An ambient occlusion rendering, when composited onto a beauty pass, can really help ground a scene, adding gravity and making all the detail pop out. To run an ambient occlusion pass is pretty straightforward. We can either do it as an override on everything or with custom materials. I'll look at doing the override first because often that's all we need for a scene. What I'll do for an override then is go to my render layers and I'll right click on the master layer and choose overrides, create new material override and surface shader. When I go into a shaded view, you can see everything is turned black. This is okay. It's actually showing the diffuse color of the surface shader. I'll press control A to go to the attributes and I'll rename this surface shader AO general. Here's how ambient occlusion works. Light bouncing around is at some point ambient or general enough it's not from anywhere specific. Adjacent objects block the bounce of that light. They occlude it. So we get darkness in the corners, not necessarily a shadow, but the blocking of bounce light. To do ambient occlusion then, we use a surface shader and I'll go into the out color texture of that surface shader, go under mental ray textures and choose a MIB amb occlusion shader. This is my ambient occlusion shader. And what it's going to do then is show areas with no occlusion as bright or white, areas of full occlusion as black, and it's determining that by the max distance. I'll show how to set this up in the rendering and what it looks like. I'll go into my render settings and into the features tab. Here in features, I'll turn off final gather, turn off global illumination, and turn off my lens shader. And that's an important one. If the lens shader is on, it will darken our ambient occlusion. While I'm here, incidentally, because this model is single-sided, I'll drop down faces and choose front, so it makes sure it renders just the front facing normal of each polygon. Now I'm going to try a test in IPR. I'll pull up my IPR window, run a quick ambient occlusion test, and I get marching ants and dots and a barely recognizable scene. Here's what's going on. In ambient occlusion, the max distance of zero doesn't mean nothing, it means everything. Everybody participates in the occlusion no matter how far apart. So I'll make the max distance, well, let's try 150 to begin. And there's our scene popping out in mostly white with really nice shadowing and shading around all the details. Now I'll put up the samples to 64. This will get rid of any dots in the scene. So instead of dots and marching ants, we get smooth gradients of occlusion. In ambient occlusion then, our bright is white and our dark is black and everything else is a gray between. Typically we want this range so we have flexibility for compositing. What I'll also do for my occlusion is play with the spread. What spread does, and I'll run half an IPR window so we can see the contrast, is to determine how that occlusion spreads into that zone, that distance. Does it cluster in the corners or does it push out and really get dark along the wall? I'll bring the spread down to 0.5 and we'll see a difference. With a lower spread, my surfaces are brighter and lighter. I'm seeing some artifacts in here, probably needing a redraw in IPR, right up here under the bridge, so I'm not too worried about it. When spread comes up even higher, let's say at one, we get a lot of darkness spreading along those walls, and so it's really an artistic choice. Do we want depth and fear in the corners, or do we want just a little bit of deepening to ground a rendering? I'm going to push this back to 0.75. And then I'll scroll down and look at the falloff. The falloff determines the rate at which the occlusion decreases, with a falloff of 1 being linear. A lower falloff number, such as 0.5, makes that ambient occlusion falloff sharper, so it's in the corner and dies off quicker. A falloff of 2, for example, really lets that occlusion last longer. And again, it's an artistic choice. How does the occlusion spread? How far out does it go? And what kind of darkness do we get? I'm going to bring my fall off back to one, so it's just a light bit of darkness in the corners. Then I'll bring back my max distance to 100. Although it looks really neat to see the occlusion fairly strong, in most renderings we don't want dark heaviness in the corners. We want just a little bit of grounding shade. Where it also is really evident is under the stairs on the left where they contact the floor. There's a good depth in them. They really look like they're sitting nice and low, and all the panels on the wall have their grooves just a little darker, and they're really going to stand out in a rendering. What I'll do is I'll take this rendering and multiply it over in a post program. This way the white will disappear and I'll get ambient occlusion darkening all those corners.